Hey, Professor Klein here. I got a question for you. Do you guys know what the most selfish organ in the body is? It's the heart. Here's why. Did you know that the heart pumps liters and liters of blood throughout the body, but the first place that blood goes when it leaves the heart is actually to the heart itself. So it is quote unquote, the most selfish organ in the body because blood is going to go first to the heart. And by selfish, I really mean that your heart needs blood to keep everything else functioning. So it would be detrimental, horrible, fatal if your heart did not get blood first. So yes, it's selfish, but it's selfish for a very good reason. Let's talk now about the coronary arteries where blood would travel to the heart. And I've actually got another video going through the coronary blood vessels on this model. So I'm actually gonna jump over to a different model that we have showing the coronary blood vessels. And this one, you kinda gotta put something up behind it to see it a little bit better but this is the outline of the blood vessels now if I look over here what am I looking at well let me get a view from up here all right here we go this is the best angle for you. this is an anterior view of both things so if I'm looking here this is the aorta this is the aorta specifically there's a spot called the base of the aorta, the first part, the ascending aorta, transverse, and descending part of the aorta. Coming off of it is the brachiocephalic trunk, the left common carotid artery, and the left subclavian artery, the, those three bumps there. You can see those over here as they extend out, but on this model, they've been cut very low. But we're focused on the coronary arteries and veins as they go to the heart. Now, these vessels, there's two main ones, are gonna branch directly off of the base of the aorta here. So you see how this is the base and it's the first part that blood would leave the heart. So if we look down in the left side, this is the left ventricle. Blood's gonna go through this valve, the aortic valve, and out the aorta, but it's going to bring it first to the right coronary artery and the left coronary artery, which is seen better over here. We got right tagged with some yellow tape, right coronary artery and the left coronary artery right here. On this model, the left one's kind of been covered by this pulmonary trunk. So this is a great model, but this one's maybe even a little bit better to see these coronary arteries and veins. Now, what you'll notice is that the left coronary artery continues on over, but it quickly branches anteriorly. And I'm gonna put my fingers behind this, this front one here so you can see what's called the anterior interventricular artery. Anterior interventricular artery, if I close this, that's this one right here. So I'll show both of them in the same shot, the anterior interventricular artery coming down the middle. This one's nicknamed the Widowmaker because if you cut off blood, <laughs> supply to this anterior interventricular artery, it's cutting off blood to the ventricles and the interventricular septum, basically the bottom huge part of your heart isn't getting blood that's not good and that can result in death fatal death with blockage of that artery but the other thing we want to notice is that if we follow this left coronary artery it's going to also come and then branch into another one and this is where you see lots of branches in here but we're just going to call this one right in here, the left circumflex. 
left circumflex. And this is about as far as you can go with the left side of the arteries. So left circumflex right there. On the right side, you can go pretty far too. And coming down in here, you have the right marginal, right marginal artery, but you're not done with the right side. And if I flip this over, follow this right one around, there's the right marginal. You can actually come all the way to the back and it becomes something called the posterior interventricular artery. Posterior interventricular artery right here. All right, let's now talk about the veins going on and let me flip it back over to the front here so that you can see the different veins. And really we think about which veins are running parallel to the arteries. And we know to get from an artery to a vein, you've got to go arterioles, capillaries, venules, and then it actually turns into the vein. So it doesn't jump right over. There's a few steps in between, but you can see they're parallel to each other. Now this big one in the front here, see this big long blue one coming up and around? You can see it's blue over here. This one actually comes all the way around and goes to the back. This is called the great cardiac vein. I'm gonna take my probe and run all along the great cardiac vein as it travels right to about here. It's big, long. So we call it the great one, right? Now right in here, see how it bubbles up? And maybe a better look at it would be from this view. Right in here, it starts to bubble up. This last half an inch, maybe a full inch of this model is showing something called the coronary sinus. The coronary sinus will protrude into the inferior vena cava, which is this one right here. On this model, it can be seen if we flip it on over right in there. There you go. Number 27, the coronary sinus. You got the great cardiac coming around, going into that coronary sinus, and then into the inferior vena cava, and eventually the right atrium, because you gotta get blood back from the heart to the heart, if that even makes sense, right? It was just going to more the myocardium of the heart, supplying the myocardium and other layers of the heart with blood, but then we gotta get it back into, let me keep going and open up this chamber, the right atrium. So if we look in here, number 58 right in here would be the opening of the coronary sinus into the right atrium, if you guys can see that. So the inferior vena cava is coming up, you got coronary sinus running into it, they're all draining into the right atrium, right? But couple different pathways that that happens. All right, back to the model here, and we can see some other veins coming off. We got some other uh, ventricular veins and some that line up with the marginal and the left circumflex, right? Not gonna name those specifically, but the other one I wanna name is if I flip it on over, there's a specific one, and this one's in line with the poster interventricular artery. This one's called the middle cardiac vein, the middle cardiac vein going on right here. This one's number 60, right next to 61, runs parallel, and this one's going up into the coronary sinus as well. Now, which side is left from a posterior view? Well, this is left. So this is our great cardiac coming around. This is our middle cardiac coming up. Well, wait a minute, what's this one on this side? This would be the right side of the heart, number 46. This is gonna be the small cardiac. The small cardiac comes around the right side, draining the right side of the heart, going into the coronary sinus. We got one big one on the left, we got smaller one on the right, and then this one in the middle. All right, this has been your video on the coronary blood vessel model. 
hopefully this helped you out and hopefully you know a little bit more about the coronary arteries and veins but wait a minute i got one more thing to show you and i had talked earlier that if one of these coronary arteries and i specifically mentioned something called the widow maker the anterior interventricular artery here if this gets clogged then it will stop the blood supply to the heart specifically the ventricles but what does clogged even mean well i got another model right here this is our normal fatty streak, atheroma, and blockage model of a blood vessel. So if I turn it to the side, you'll notice that this is an artery. You can see the different tunics of the artery. Check out my blood vessel video for everything included in an artery. But if I move this, you'll start to see some things happen. Notice some some accumulation, yellow stuff on the side. That's the fatty streak going on there. A little bit of plaque. Now, mostly diet, lack of exercise can cause this. A lot of genetics in play as well. If I keep going it, it gets bigger. And at this point, the person might not even know anything is wrong, but you can see things are getting really, really occluded. And this is what we call atherosclerosis. And eventually it becomes this. And it can be sometimes up to 80, 90% blocked before the person even knows it. And that's what's going on inside the artery. No symptoms. And then all of a sudden it blocks the blood flow. And blood flow can't get to the heart. That's called ischemia. But it can produce that heart attack that we might think of with blocked arteries all right now it's the end of the video and i am finished talking about the coronary arteries and veins we talked about this model take some time rewatch this put any questions you have down in the comments region or email me i'll put my email in the description and i'd be happy to respond to you with any questions or requests for future videos that you might have. But I'm Professor Klein in the Human Anatomy Lab at Ohio University. Thanks for watching.